Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we will be taking a look at what is happening across the North Atlantic Basin with the focus being on the Caribbean. So we'll be taking a look at all that is happening here as well as the possibility for us to see uh, maybe something try to develop as we progress into the latter part of this week. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update and to show your support for the and to show your support for the channel you can leave a like on this video all right and so let us go ahead and kickstart things uh returning to this infrared satellite imagery here and we're seeing that there is quite a bit that is going on uh in terms of the intertropical convergence zone so just off africa we're seeing quite a bit of activity within the region of course no development is expected from this region and uh we also see we see less activity as we progress towards the west and as we look at the caribbean we're not seeing too much going on but let's zoom into the region so here we have it and we're seeing that there are some uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms across some areas but the northwestern Caribbean is looking pretty clear for the most part nothing significant is happening so let's look at each of these regions beginning with the northeastern Caribbean and so across sections of the uh, Leeward Islands and also the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico we see some scattered showers and thunderstorms within that area so it is possible that sections of the Virgin Islands are experiencing rainfall uh, this morning because we're having all of this, all these clouds making their way through the area. So with enough saturation, they could enhance the precipitation across the region. It's Similar story for the Windward Islands we're seeing here that across sections of Trinidad and Tobago some activity is dissipating but we're definitely seeing where the trades are resulting in all of those clouds making their way through the area might bring along with them some showers and thunderstorms so uh, nothing major across that area. Looking across most of the greater Antilles we're seeing here that not too much is happening just a pop-up shower here or there uh, but nothing very significant as of right now but for the south caribbean we're seeing a completely different story here because there we have all of that shower and thunderstorm activity building so that is something that's a little bit constant in the area and as a matter of fact this is the origin point that one of the models the gfs is expecting that uh, we could see for a system so this could be uh where we could see a system brew in the caribbean and so we'll be taking a look at what is expected later down in this video let us now go ahead and take a look at current conditions and so we're looking at this uh water vapor loop and so where we see those yellows and oranges that is indicating dry stable conditions and we definitely see a lot of dry air across most of the caribbean and so where we have dry air notice that you don't see too much activity there and that is because uh, all that shower and thunderstorm activity that takes place it depends on instability so when they're on stable weather conditions that is when we typically see all that shower and thunderstorm development but without that uh, it's not likely that we will see too much happening but for the most part we definitely have all that dry air across the region nothing too significant right now is just going to be resulting in pretty much some great weather and uh, in terms of the wind shear now, so we're looking at the wind shear for the tropical Atlantic. So this might be a bit confusing, but we're following that black line that we see on this graph right here and the blue line. So the black line indicates the average uh, in terms of what is there for the wind shear end on that X axis going from January to December. And we are seeing where... We have that dip, that significant dip in the values. Wind shear is something that really helps to displace activity in developing tropical cyclones. And so uh, when, the, when that is quite strong, it is likely to suppress uh, tropical cyclone activity. And uh, we see that it is at its strongest during November going all the way back to the start of the season uh, in June and so during that time gap between June and November we see that there is 
usually less wind shear across the Atlantic compared to rest of the to the rest of the months of the year. And that is why uh, this period is also designated as hurricane season. It's when things are most conducive. So conditions are just favorable enough uh, generally to allow for tropical cyclones to develop. But as we progress into November, we're seeing where this blue line, this blue line is indicating what is there now and how much uh, the shear varies from what is average. And we're seeing that it is just around average Average right now, of course, the shear is increasing as we progress into the middle part of November. Actually, today is the midpoint of the month, the 15th of November. So uh, as we're going to be progressing into the latter part of this month, going to December, the shear is just going to increase and continue increasing until we're heading closer and closer to the start of the hurricane season next year. So it's not likely that we're going to be seeing too much happening, uh, aside from what the GFS is showing in terms of that potential system in the Caribbean, I don't think that we're going to be seeing anything else for this season. So now let's go ahead and talk about that expected system. And so now we're going to be looking at what the GFS model is expecting. And so this is a map showing humidity and we have the teals that indicate moisture and the darker they get, the more moisture there is. Meanwhile, the browns indicate dry air and of course just like the teals whenever we see darker browns that is indicating uh more massive dry air or denser uh dry air out there and so we're seeing that as we're going to be progressing into later this week go into friday we start to see all that increase in moisture across the south caribbean and uh the system just eventually affecting parts of honduras and nicaragua and so this is quite interesting the model has been consistent with this so let's see if something is is going to be uh, really developing within the area but as we saw on satellite earlier we definitely have all those showers and thunderstorms within the South Caribbean. So it is definitely a spot to watch. As I said yesterday, uh, it is a spot that we definitely have to pay attention to because that is usually where tropical cyclones originate from. Uh, not saying that they'll be strong or destructive or very intense, but it is just an area where we typically see late season development. But as for the euro, euro is not really expecting that we're going to be seeing too much out there. It is showing all of that dry air across the Caribbean as we're going to be heading into the end of this week. Uh, it's definitely showing that increase in moisture, but the model is not expecting that we're going to be seeing a tropical cyclone within the area. So mainly that increase in moisture, so more than likely an increase in all that shower and thunderstorm activity. But in terms of a tropical cyclone, well, the euro model is not expecting that as a fright now and tropical cyclone activity is all going to depend on the favorability of the area but of course guys that is for the long term as of now there are no disturbances marked by the nhc and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by and that is really it for now so if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be with the wise